Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Welcome back, how's everyone doing? So we did wanna talk about something pretty serious today that I'm sure most people, I think I think most people who click on this video will have already heard about, know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, I think a lot of people, even if they don't follow the NWSL, they know about it, you know? There's yeah, a lot of people- they've heard about it. Yeah, there's a lot of people who just kind of focus on the national games, which is fine. And there's a lot of people who don't really watch NWSL. And there's a lot of international viewers from the other, you know, Europe who know about the NWSL, but don't really watch the games um, but this story is huge and it's disgusting and it's uh, it's horrible and it's sad but you know hopefully change comes from the story let's go back i always say that. let's go back um um in the last four or five months um there's been like three or four coaching changes that have already happened and we're going to kind of talk about it when we read a little bit of the story but there's a big problem there's not even a big problem in coaching in wsl there's a big problem in management ownership the systemic nature of how they treat players and women not just in nwsl in a lot of sports slash yeah. in society so um we're gonna kind of read from this article um but the big headline is we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the big headline yeah. is paul riley has who is who was the coach of the north carolina courage has been uh fired because of allegations made by former players and a report from The Athletic has come out detailing these stories. And they're just, they're worse than I thought they were going to be. Makes you want to vomit. Like, it's just, I just, it's so disturbing. Yeah, so we're not going to read from that article. There is a paywall for that article. You can find it online. Because I, until I read it, I, I kind of heard this or that. But it, it's bad. It's very bad. Abuse of power, sexual coercion. A disgusting abuse of power. Like, and... Bullying to the most extreme level. You know, he had a vendetta against the United States national team. He had homophobic comments. Comments. So pretty much, he's a terrible person. But there is so many facets to the story because it's not just about Paul Riley. It's about the whole organization of NWSL slash sports in general slash society. So we're just going to read from an article. Like I said, this video is not going to go. What, what we're going to talk about, we're not really going to talk about the details of the story, mostly because it's so involved. And I just, I'm sure most people have heard what had happened. But we're going to kind of just read about the overall problem in the NWSL. There is a problem in the NWSL that hopefully now it's changing women's sports as well slowly and we're going to kind of read from an article that kind of gives a brief overview of everything that's been kind of going on um this isn't the most up-to-date article but i thought it gave a lot of good information so we're going to read um a little bit from this article nwsl players speak out amid abuse claims burn it all down for years they did not speak about what they endured at least not publicly they were afraid of losing their spots on the field losing their jobs maybe losing the entire league one that they were told again and again was the best women's soccer league in the world. But this year, the players of the National Women's Soccer League started to speak up in a summer of reckoning that led to Thursday to high-profile high players and other prominent figures calling for dramatic change. The players' union demanded an end to systemic abuse plaguing the NWSL in the wake of reporting from The Athletic that an NWSL coach, the North Carolina Courage, is Paul Riley had sexually coerced multiple players as well as reporting by the Washington Post about verbal and emotional abuse by the former coach of the Washington Spirit. Riley denied the allegations to the Athletic. Of course he would. Uh, on Friday, the NWSL announced it would not play matches for this weekend. I'm sorry for the pain so many are feeling, Commissioner Lisa Baird said in a statement announcing the decision. And the Spirit encouraged former NWSL players did something they had never done before. They went on record to detail the abuse that they said they had experienced. And on Thursday, a long list of NWSL players, including Alex Morgan and Megan Rapino, offered angry criticism of the league. They said they had failed to protect players. Men protecting men who are abusing women, Rapino wrote on Twitter of the NWSL, burn it all down, let their heads roll. NWSL, it's time to get your shit together, Bre Becky Sauerbrunn, the captain of the U.S. Women's National Team, said on Twitter, to be where we are today is unacceptable. The league and every club has to do better. The Athletic reported that the league, including Baird, had been told repeatedly, repeatedly about some aspects of Riley's behavior and had not taken action, allowing him to remain in his position. On Thursday, <clears throat> Morgan posted images to Twitter that showed one of the victims, Sinead Farley, reporting she had been a victim of inappropriate conduct by Riley to Baird in April. Riley was terminated following the Athletic's story. 
In a statement, Baird said she was shocked and disgusted by the story and that the league planned to report what it said were new allegations to the U.S. Center of Safe Sport for investigation. But she did not address what she and the league had previously known about Riley. But the uproar over player abuse has shined an uncomfortable light on the culture and labor practices of the 10-year league, which has mostly been dominated in its coaching and ownership ranks by men. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the 2021 season, the league has had just one female coach and most of the league's majority owners and lead investors are men. Beyond its leadership ranks, which are finally diversifying, the league's expert league exerts extraordinary control over players' rights, a fact that some in the league warn in exacerbating warn is exacerbating abuse by making it more difficult for players to speak up. The league places severe restrictions on players' rights while paying salaries that mostly fall below thirty thousand per year. Until this year, it had few mechanisms in place to report abuse. Riley is the third NWSL coach to be fired from the league for misconduct this year. Richie Burke, the former spirit coach accused of verbal abuse, was fired from the club earlier this week after an NWSL investigation found that he had violated league policies. Christy Holly, the male former coach of Racing Louisville, was fired with cause in September. Pretty much, they're hiring terrible people. Keep that in. <laughs> a fourth coach, Fareed Ben Sidi of Ohio Rain in Tacoma, Washington, resigned in July. When Ben Sidi Ben Sidi's departure was announced, Ohio Rain CEO Bill Predmore thanked Ben Sidi for his contribution to the team and said the club wished him the best in all future endeavors. But Ben Sidi had been subject of a formal complaint of verbal abuse made by t- a player. Two sources with knowledge of the situation told the Post that the French coach allegedly made inappropriate comments to players regarding their fitness and nutrition. Bensidi could not be reached for a comment. But Bensidi's pattern of behavior was known publicly before he was hired by Rain last year. A U.S. national team player, Lindsay Horan, had spoken about her experiences being shamed for her weight by Bensidi when she played for him at French club Paris Saint-Germain. All four coaches had faced previous allegations of improprieties with players, some of them public, and like after Ben City's departure, NWSL teams put out statements following Burke and Riley leaving their jobs that did not indicate any allegation of misconduct. The Thorns said Thursday that the club chose to sever ties with Riley in 2015 after the team found clear violations of our company policy, but at the time, the Thorns general manager thanked Riley for his time at the club and said only that his contract would not be renewed. In August, the Spirit announced Burke would be stepping down from his coaching position for health reasons, but would remain in the team's front office. The Post published a story detailing allegations of verbal abuse against Burke the next day. The lack of representation of women and people of color on teams and in the league has become a major focus for some clubs, which have worked to hire female coaches and general managers and bring on more women owners. In some cases, however, those efforts have most have been mostly symbolic. After the Spirit brought on a female co-owner, Michelle Kang, last year, she raised concerns about the treatment of women within the organization that she said that she said went unaddressed. The Post reported that Kang has since been sidelined by the team's controlling owner, Steve Baldwin, with the team in the midst of turmoil. And the NWSL's problems go beyond representation. The Athletic reported that players allegedly abused by Paul Riley had written to Baird asking for her to renew investigation into Riley's behavior after the league created a new anti-harassment policy early this year. Baird declined, the Athletic reported, um, saying the matter had been investigated, investigated to conclusion when it was first reported in 2015. The NWSL had no, comprehensi- no comprehensive anti-harassment policy in place and accessible to players until earlier this year, and some teams are only just beginning to create human resource offices. Spirit players allegedly abused, abused by Burke told the Post that they felt they had nowhere to turn and they feared for their jobs if they spoke up. If the culture is always, let's protect ownership and not let's protect the players, the players will feel weak in a position, Aluko said. You have a a culture of control, which means that players don't have autonomy over their own careers. Amen. 
The NWCL Players Association is in the midst of negotiations for its first contract and has made economic rights and issues like free agency an important piece of its demands. On Thursday, it made new demands of the NWCL, including that the league suspend any officials who knew of their abusive behavior but did not report it. The NWCL has failed us, the union said in a statement. We are taking our power back. Yeah, so that's kind of an older... It's from the first couple days where this came out. But since then, Lisa Baird has resigned slash terminated. I mean, it's... Fire her ass. Yeah, it's one of those things where she resigned um, because the no one in the NWSL had any um, respect for the way she handled things. So one thing in the article, it kind of talked about it. But when the new anti-harassment po- policy was enacted this year, two players who okay. spoke up against Paul Riley back at the Thorns, they wrote... A email to Lisa saying now that there's this new policy in place we need to reinvestigate what happened to us back in 2015 with the thorns and Lisa Bard basically responded back to them saying oh we investigated there's nothing further to do thank you for writing I hope you have a great day and that yeah God, I hate people who sweep things under the rug but like, Alex Morgan the- is the one who made those emails public to say this is how she responded to those emails so so, you know, the story really isn't about exactly what Paul Riley did. I think what he did is completely disgusting and horrible, but it's about the bigger issue that why that was able to, why he was able to get away with it and no repercussions at all. All these people knew about it. Um, I mean, yeah. Shit is still happening, like, well, everywhere, not just. Yeah. And it's, like, seriously disgusting. It's Let's very, just... yeah. It's very reminiscent of the Larry Nassar stuff with USA That's Gymnastics. That's exactly what I was thinking. I mean, he he was sexually abusing these chil- these little girls, little girls. Yes, um, children. And um, the USA Gymnastics knew about it for years and years and years and years and years. It's almost like they found that these players that they have are expendable. Oh, you know, I have a good soccer player, but there's 100 more good soccer players. So if you speak up. If like you, that. I, I don't know. To, they need to protect the players, like they're saying. Yeah. What they talk about in that article um, the Portland Thorns knew, they knew about these allegations and the, the players had come forward. So they knew about it. They ended up not renewing Paul Riley's contract. But this is the thing. they Not only did they um, not renew, they, they just said, we're not renewing his contract. It wasn't like, so it was like almost like they had a bad season. Oh, we're not renewing it. Then he was able to get a job five months later. Courage, which was then the um, flash. So he was able to get another job five months later. And this is the kicker, though. Based on what they say, Portland Thorns told the NWSL everything that had happened. So they had told him. So it's almost like, well, we had told them nothing we can do after we tell them in their heads. So they're like, well, we did what we were supposed to do, quote unquote. But that meant Paul Riley could go get another job five months later and just like nothing happened rewarded for abusing people basically i i literally have no words that's how pissed off i and am like it I, talks I about even. a freed bestity remember you and i did a video about freed bestity we, we okay, titled, you're not even saying his name right ben, ben ben Stiddy. Stiddy. we did a video about freed ben Stiddy, uh about two years ago and we basically put the, the we put the title disaster coaching choice or they made a disaster move hiring this coach every single person who heard about this coach knew that it was a disaster but if only they listened to us earlier yeah but they just still hired him you know giving him a second chance i guess um why give these people these chances when they've already been abusive yeah there's there's a million other coaches out there yeah there's hundreds of other coaches out there that they could be hiring yeah um and other women coaches. Yeah. I'm sorry. Women know how to coach women. Protecting. I don't think men know how to coach women. And they're protecting these um, men. G- these men at the expense of these young. It doesn't even matter young. They're protecting these men at the expense of these players who, if there wasn't the players, there wouldn't be a league. But they look at the players as, indis- you know, dispensable. Oh, I have a great player. You know, there's a lot of great players, which there are, but that's not the point. The point is you have a league. And then the the people in the league say, well, if I speak up, they know they could just find another player possibly. So they yeah, can't, they had disgusting. zero power to say anything. And, you know, the power dynamic, the Paul Riley story, the, the players with the allegations, they said, we felt like if we didn't do what he wanted us to do, then we're either, and they, there was proven that they were benched, taken out at halftime. Um, so it's just disgusting. It's finally something happening, happening, but it had to take to this, to this extent. Too little, too freaking late. Like, yeah, seriously, this shit should have happened. This should have come out back when Me Too started. You know, right, Even before right. Before then, but I know it's, and the world is changing always so much. But 
Yeah, let's... And also, you know, people might think, well, this is an NWSL thing. Unfortunately, I'm sure this is happening all around the world uh, in every league. But the maybe maybe United States is a little more empowered to say we're going to stand up. Or maybe some countries it's not happening as much, you know, but some definitely yeah, some countries. Sure this is happening probably worse in other countries, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, and and it's not just it's not just sports either. It's yeah, it's society. Every, yeah, it's society. Ever any any job, you know. Yeah, it's, it's just disgusting. Just when I read the the article uh, with the Paul Riley, and, yeah, I'm gonna tell you, be honest. That Paul Riley guy always gave me the creeps. Always, I always saw him. He was always giving the creeps. Things like that. This shit is happening everywhere. But the problem with the 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 NWSL, these women, a lot of these women have no power because and you know they don't pay the NWSL players. A lot, so they don't feel like they have don't have a lot of power. Um, so but I mean, the NWSL, they're really, I mean, the women of the league, they're really getting, I mean, their voice and the collectively as players, they're coming out, and they're really making yeah. a difference, which making is good, society and better, bringing light to all these. Can I say it? You can you can bleep this if you want. Okay. Fucked up issues. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, kudos to all the players and sorry, and this, you like, know. They need to clean house. Every single person involved in NWSL right now and the higher ups, all the owners, all the man. I mean, they all need to be yep. clean Wipe house. Wipe them out. Start fresh. You know, fact, like just said, throw them all in jail. Burn the house down to um, start fresh because there are so many people who are compliant and complicit in this. Mm-hmm. And um, they knew what they were doing. And I'm sure some people were even scared for their own jobs, but it doesn't matter, you know. Letting people be abused uh, is disgusting. I, think, I don't think any job is worth, you know, this freaked up, yeah. disturbing things that are happening and the the detrimental effects that it has on people. It's yeah. like, it's and, like put yourself in that situation. If you were that person, if that was happening to you, I don't think you'd freaking like it or your daughter or your yeah. son or whatever. Like, yeah. And like God, they people said, don't think. Part of the problem is the way soccer, NWSL, and I don't know if it's a soccer thing or just NWSL thing for United States. I know that Europe, it's different. The way they don't have free agency and they the way that they don't have, like they said, autonomy over their careers. That's disturbing in its own right because yeah, at no other league happen. is quite like that. So what do you guys think? I mean, what do you guys think? That's kind of a kind of a silly question but um we just wanted to talk about it it's very disturbing and it, I, I even heard some people say it's hard to watch the nwsl knowing these things are going on it's hard to like root I for know. the league you root for the players individually but it's hard to root it's for like, the league. yeah i want to keep watching for the players and stuff but it's like disgusting because you don't want to give your money to like mm-hmm. such a freaked up um organization organization mm-hmm. yeah so it's, it's like almost feels like bad watching it. but you want to support the women you know who are amazing yeah, so we're out here we're supporting the women we support all the women in the league and i mean it's sad and unfortunate that this is happening but i'm glad change is coming out of it and hopefully even more change and right burn it all down what do you guys think um yeah well, you know like i said if we hear anything, if anything new comes from, we'll we'll talk about it. But the big thing is, you know, the, they're getting rid of these coaches. Lisa Baird is gone, thank God, and we'll go from there. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, and like I said, that article, we didn't really talk about that article, but if you can find, you know, the paywall, read it because it is, uh, yeah, a lot of disturbing details in there. But um, I mean, it sheds light I, on I, a lot of things. Yeah, and I can't even talk about it because it gets me too angry. Yeah, it's disgusting. I almost punched a wall yesterday. She did. I saw it. Actually, I did a little bit. Questions, comments down below. We'll, we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good night. All right, bye. bye.